One of the things that we have not talked about in this class, either this year or very much other years, are phage with circularly, circularly permuted genomes. And I've given you a chapter, a uh, section of a chapter uh, from last semester for you to go back and look at, and we will do more discussion of this uh, as we go on in the semester. But I wanted to cover a little bit of it right now because we have a phage among the four that were sequenced that has a circularly permuted genome, and that phage is CUC. Now, I know not all of you are going to be working with CUC, but CUC is going to be interesting enough that it's likely going to see a presence, uh, whatever gets presented at the end of the year, at the Howard Hughes uh, Medical Institution. So uh, with that in mind, this is just going to be just a very short um, talk about how these things work. So there's two terms that are going to be used, one of which is circularly, circularly permuted, the other is terminally redundant. Uh, just to start with some background, most of the microbacteriophage that we work with are, as you know, linear DNA molecules in the phage head, and they circularize through cos sites uh, at the ends of those uh, linear molecules to form the circular molecule, which then can either integrate into the host as a prophage if it's a lysogenic phage, or it can uh, be used for replication uh, during lytic growth. Some phage, however, do lack the cos sites. Uh, that CUC is lack lacking cos sites is not unique. Yet they still manage to form circular molecules upon injection into the host. Coliform phages uh, P1, P22 are the ones that are most widely studied. There's a whole cluster, cluster B, of mycobacteriophage that have uh, circularly permuted genomes. And then, of course, from our interests, uh, CUC. I will say that uh, one of the phages from last year from this class is a cluster B phage. So just some ex explanation, terminally redundant genomes mean you have the same sequence on each end. So if we look at this is a chromosome, a linear chromosome that might be in a phage head, and it starts off A, B, C, D, E, F, but then the genes represented by A and B are repeated on the other end. So we have the same sequence on both ends. Circularly permuted genomes are ones in which not only are they terminally redundant, but the start place for the redundancy is different from one phage particle to the next. So in one phage, we might have this kind of sequence where it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, and then A, B. But then in another phage, this whole the phasing of this has shifted. So it starts not with A, B, but with C, D, and then it goes C, D, E, F, A, B, and then back to C, D. Right? And then in yet another phage, it goes... Uh, starting not at CD, but it has shifted again to EF, and it goes EF, A, B, C, D, and then EF again. So these are the terminal redundancies, okay, and this is the circularly permuted molecules. And there are a large number of combinations. There's a large number of places where the start points can happen. And so what you can get is you have an entire phage genome and then some. And that's the result of the way in which the phage particles go together and in the way in which they are packaged. So we know that phage DNA gets packaged into a head. And you also know that phage replication often involves forming what are called concatomers, which are multiple copies on a single DNA molecule of the genome. So here's a place where the genome starts here, and it goes to here, but then there's another copy here, and there's another copy that goes out here, and another copy that goes out there. So what happens in the case of, of the circularly permuted phage is the phage package by packaging what is called a headful rather than looking for cleavage at cost sites. So there's an initial cleavage in one of these PAC sites, and PAC stands for packaging, and this then gets, uses the start point for pulling DNA into the head of the phage. And when it gets to the next PAC site, it doesn't form cleavage there. It actually just goes right past it. And so what you see is something like here, where it goes right past that pack site and adds on a little bit more. And then there is cleavage. So that means the next genome that's going to be pulled into a head starts a little bit away from the pack site and goes on beyond it. The terminal redundancy, uh, we don't know what it's going to be for CUC. We do know that in some phage, like P22, it's about 2% of the genome. In other phage, it may be more or less than that. So that's how the terminal redundancy is obtained, is by having a whole genome and then some. And then the next phage starts from that then some and goes on a whole genome's worth and then a little bit more. So how does this form a circle? 
So when a linear DNA gets into the phage uh, cytoplasm, uh, then it circularizes by pairing between the redundant ends. Now this pairing, these two sequences are identical, and that pairing is just like the pairing that occurs between homologous chromosomes during meiosis in uh, human cells. So it's the same kind of pairing, and then when they're paired, a recombination event takes place, and this recombination is take, carried out either by a host enzyme or one encoded by the phage. And if you have a recombination, one way to deal with this is you start up here, we can trace to the recombination site, we would drop down and finish out going with this direction, or we would start here, we go through A, we get to the recombination site, we jump up to the other chromosome through B, and we go around through C. And the end products, therefore, are one complete circle and one small piece of DNA. The circle goes on as any circular phage genome does, either integrating into the host if it's lysogenic or being used for replication if it's a lytic infection. The linear molecule gets degraded. So because each phage particle contains a phage genome that starts in a different place, there's no common base that we can call number one as we do with the phage that have cossites. So the phage community decided to assign that position to the first nucleotide of the coding region of the terminase. The terminase is what's involved uh, in packaging the, of, the, um, of the phage DNA and causing the final you know, the cleavage between each of the different genomes. And so that first, uh, the terminase then, uh, is also on the very left arm. It's one of the first genes of genes that have cosites, and so that's why they chose that particular enzyme. So the result is it puts all the structural genes on the left arm just as they are for other phage that we study, and then we have you know, the control genes uh, that are on the right arm and replication genes in the middle. So the overall structure of the genome is going to look the same, but the actual structure of the genome in the phage particle is different. And that's all I'm going to say at the moment about circularly permuted genomes.